Um, I'm very honored to present our next speaker, Congresswoman Sharice Davids, who has spent um, her career helping build tribal communities, doing economic development work in Indian country. Uh, she spent some time as a White House fellow. Uh, and then when she returned to Kansas, she decided to run for Congress, and she won. And so she represents uh, uh, Kansas's third congressional district. And we're just very honored to have you here joining us this evening, uh, Congresswoman. Thanks, Clara. It's so good to uh, see all of you uh, here tonight. And like Deb, I spent a little bit of time uh, looking at the names of all the participants and folks who are uh, tuning in. And uh, what an exciting time. I'm really thrilled to be with all of you tonight as we kick off the Democratic National Convention and uh, getting to hear from uh, uh, our BNC Chairman Tom Perez here for a couple minutes ahead of time. It was a very pleasant surprise. Um, and, you know, I mean, I, I feel like uh, some of the intro was already done. And, of course, I appreciate all of my uh, sister and colleagues' comments. Um, uh, Congresswoman uh, Holland and I get to spend a good amount of time with each other, but I, I cannot tell you uh, how grateful I am that uh, I get to – uh, I get to do this uh, with her because, um, you know, we, I often talk uh, to folks about uh, one of the most important things about uh, Deb and I serving in Congress is not just uh, that by being in the room, we change the conversation, but that also uh, because of our background and understanding of, of Indian law and work on uh, uh, issues and tribal communities, we have the ability and opportunity to educate our colleagues and to influence uh, decision making. And, you know, that's uh, that's the difference that having Native folks in elected office can make, which is why I'm so excited that we've got record breaking numbers of Native folks running for uh, office this year. We're seeing certainly uh, a new age of, of Native people just really taking the reins and uh, our state legislatures and in the federal government. And um, I'm just looking to, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to having more Native women serving in Congress and uh, in the Senate. Uh, I've got uh, Paulette's here on the line tonight too, I think. Um, yep. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just think that uh, the, the, the opportunity to serve as the first two Native American women in Congress is, uh, amazing, but the more amazing thing will be when we're talking about the fifth and sixth and tenth, uh, Native women serving, uh, serving in the House and the Senate. So, uh, we have, uh, a lot of work to do, certainly, but, uh, in addition to electing Native candidates, we gotta make sure that we're, uh, electing, uh, people who are gonna be stronger partners for Native communities, and that's up and down the ballot. And, uh, of course, we've heard it already. This is gonna start with us electing Vice President Joe Biden to the White House. Uh, and I know when elected, Vice President Biden's going to continue his commitment. Um, he's already been demonstrating it uh, during this campaign, his commitment to Native communities. And uh, I know he's going to ensure that the federal government uh, upholds promises and obligations, uh, treaty, treaty uh, obligations to Indian country, and that uh, Native voices are going to be at the table. They're going to be uh, heard in the highest levels of our government. And uh, that's what we need right now. I mean, we need elected officials. Uh, we need people in decision-making positions who are going to listen, who are going to uh, hear the needs of people that are impacted by their decisions. And Vice President Biden has demonstrated his readiness and willingness to do that. And it's, it's one of the main reasons that I'm pleased to, uh, to be here, that I'm pleased to, uh, support him because in addition to listening, uh, on the campaign, I know he's planning on, uh, uh reestablishing the Tribal Nations Conference. And, uh, you know, we saw this during the eight years of the Obama presidency. And, uh, obviously we have somebody in the White House right now who's, uh, not interested in listening to so many communities and, uh, certainly, uh, our native communities are, uh, are part of that. So we got to make sure that, uh, we have the tribal nations conference going forward and we can do that by electing, uh, by electing Joe Biden. 
And, um, I just want to, uh, I feel like, like, uh, Deb said so many of the things that, um, I think are so important. Um, and so many of the things that, uh, we need to be thinking about murdered and missing indigenous women, making sure that, uh, we're addressing, um, you know, we're in the middle of, uh, of multiple national crises right now. The pandemic is threatening the health and the economic security of so many people. Uh, and we know that, that Indian country is getting hit real hard. And, uh, we also know that we are long overdue. Uh, for the conversation and the change and progress around systemic racism and injustice in this country. And instead of focusing on those huge issues, we have somebody in the White House right now who's more focused on uh, stopping people from voting than he is on stopping the impacts and the devastation of the coronavirus pandemic. And, uh, you know, these are the kinds of things when we look at what this president's trying to do to our post office, when we look at what this president's trying to do by stopping uh, tribal communities from having access to uh, the funding that we fought so hard to get into the coronavirus relief packages, we know that we're ready for change. I know I'm speaking, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here that we need, that we need change. Um, but I'm so excited about the opportunity we have. Uh, this number of folks jumping on here tonight, uh, ready to make change, ready to do the hard work that's going to be, uh, necessary and, uh, and, and supporting, uh, the national convention in, uh, putting Joe Biden and, and Kamala Harris on the ballot. Uh, I, I have been saying this for a long time that the native vote cannot be overlooked. It cannot be overstated how important our vote, our voices are in this country when it comes to electing the next president of the United States. We heard it a few minutes ago, but Arizona, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Carolina, I mean, like the, the number of states that are competitive and where we can make the difference in winning that state, it cannot be, it cannot be overstated. So thank you all for, con- for contributing for uh, phone banking and text banking and, and being willing to do uh, the, the hard work every single day. Uh, I'm looking forward to continuing to be in this uh, with all of you. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, November. I am optimistic, but I'm optimistic because we're doing the work. And then the last thing I'll say is, uh, uh, Governor Lewis, I'm also disappointed that I didn't get to see you. Uh, at the, at the debates that are supposed to be out there. So it's so good to see so many of you. And, uh, with that, I will, I will stop so we can get on to the next speaker. Thank you, Congresswoman. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce Governor.